oh, hey, you caught us during a, an upgrade to our board. And I figured while we're at it, we might as well talk a little bit about our solar charge controllers. So what we're doing, what we're in the process of doing is adding a second or uh, another solar charge controller to our board. Uh, because our array is split up eight in two separate arrays now, so we wanted to add a second solar charge controller so that we can get the maximum amount of power out of our solar arrays. I thought I'd take this time to talk to you a little bit about how Victron rates their solar charge controllers. When you look at the different solar charge controllers, a few things that kind of stand out is, is, first of all, all of these are listed as smart solar solar charge controllers. Now what that means is that you're going to be able to see all three of these devices as separate items when using the Victron Connect app on your phone, tablet, or laptop computer, or desktop. And what that does is that allows you remote access as long as you're within Bluetooth of being able to control the, the solar charge controller and set settings and view what kind of power or performance you've had out of that solar charge controller. Now, some of the things that, they, uh, that differentiates the individual solar charge controllers is they're all MPPTs. However, they all have these numbers after them. You have a 150. This one's a 150.85, you have 150.100 on this controller. And so what those numbers represent, the first number, the 150, the 100 indicates what the maximum voltage you're going to be able to send into this solar charge controller from your array. Now a couple months ago we made a change to our, our array. Uh, the initial change that we made to our array when we started adding panels outside. We started off with a 150 because I had less than 1400 watts of power on my 24 volt system. And so the 150 was working out pretty well. But then we made a configuration change to our wiring and we wired every, all of our panels in series, which meant that now our six panels are actually pushing almost 130, uh, almost 130 volts to the solar charge controller. Because of that elevated voltage, we're no longer able to use the 150 in order to control the 1200 watts of, of solar panels that we have on this one string. So what we're gonna end up doing, well now, what we're gonna end up doing is controlling them through a 15085. Now a 15085 on a 24 volt system is certainly overkill. However, that's what I have as a demo, so that's what we're gonna use. So when you look at 15100, what it means is that now we'll be able to string our panels up in series up to 150 volts. Victron has in solar charge controllers that will go up as high as 450 volts. Um, UL listed right now is 150 or two or the 250 volt series. Uh, you can find those in UL listed. The second number of all these solar charge controllers, you have a 50 down at the, the on this bottom one you have the 85 this one's listed as 100. what that's telling us is that these solar charge controllers have the ability on whatever battery bank nominal battery bank that you apply these to you you're going to be maxed out at 100 amps on this one for the 150 year wire you're maxed out at 50 amps so that means that if you were to connect this to a 12 or 24 volt system that your 150 is going to be able to, to control 1400 watts to give you the capability of 50 amps output.
from the solar panels as long as you stay underneath that 100 volts. Now, something to keep in mind and something that I've seen over the last few weeks is that people are mistaking uh, the, the, their requirements uh, when they go and build their systems because 48 volt systems are becoming more and more popular. The 130 and the 150 are 12 or 24 volt nominal systems only. So if you go and try to connect this to a 48 volt system, uh, you're gonna do some bad things. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're wiring up or searching for the, the proper charge controller for your system. So let's talk about some of the connections that are on the solar charge controllers. We'll start off with the 150 because it's a basic charge controller. It has a V direct cable connection at the bottom. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to connect the solar charge controller to a GX device through a V direct cable to give you a wired connection for data transfer between this and the GX device. There's also a tiny little knob at the bottom that you can read the owner's manual and if you rotate this knob, you can actually set the, the, the charging profile just by adjusting this knob to a specific number, depending on what kind of chemistry you're using the, the charge controller for. But because it is a smart solar charge controller, you can also go in directly through the, the Victron Connect software and change its, its charging profile. Now, when you get into the 150 series charge controllers, there's potential that you're gonna come across some different connectors. You still have a v, VE Direct connection on the bottom. You still have a knob so that if you just wanted to turn that knob to the, to the proper uh, chemistry to automatically set the, the charge profile in the, the, the connect or in the, the charge controller. But you also have a remote connection, you have a relay connection, and then you have the connection for what they refer to as VE CAN. VE CAN allows, instead of using VE Direct, you can use VE CAN, the VE CAN network, and with your Servo GX, you have the capability that you can daisy chain up to 25 devices through the VE CAN network to be able to relay its information to, to the, the, the servo. So if you're building a system with multiple charge controllers and have a rather large array, you're gonna be able to, to connect a bunch of those together just by daisy chaining the connections using standard RJ45 ethernet cables. So that's the VE CAN network. You have a remote control here that is going to allow you to basically insert a switch to turn this charge controller manually on or off. That can come in handy if you have a battery management system that doesn't necessarily connect to the Victron GX device, but has the ability to tell your system that it needs to shut off charging options. You can wire in a relay to be able to, to uh, to disconnect this loop to be able to, to shut the, the charger off that way. You also have a relay that can be controlled in here to set different parameters that you may see on the solar charge controller to be able to turn on and off fans, to, to be able to cause other systems to cycle on and off. And then of course you still have your standard connections. The way that that Victron does it. The outsides are the positives, the inside is the negative. Now one thing that you need to make sure of is that you actually utilize for your PV side, you have the positive and negative, and the battery side, you have the positive and negative. When you connect the negatives on the bottom of the solar charge controller, you need to make sure that they stay separate. That you cannot have a common negative between these two terminals. Otherwise, your solar charge controller is gonna error out and 
you're, you'll be hunting to figure out what the problem is. If you have any other additional questions in regards to a solar charge controller or you're looking for some assistance to properly size a controller to meet your needs, also when you get into the larger solar charge controllers, you have an option to have a remote display right here on the solar charge controller. If you want to be able to go in and adjust settings or just see what kind of output is coming out of this solar charge controller, you can undo the cap here and insert a small display that just gives you an updated status on, on what it's doing right here on the device itself. Victron also offers a line of solar charge controllers that are referred to as blue solar charge controllers. The difference between those and smart solar is that the blue solar uh, charge controllers do not have the Bluetooth capability in them. If you happen to have one of those or come across one of those that meets your needs, you can add Bluetooth capability to it through a dongle that Victron offers, or you can also go through the VE Direct that goes into a Servo or a GX device and access the, the, the information that way. So if, you're, if your budget is really down to counting pennies when looking at a system, that is one way that you can help reduce your cost. Now, its overall cost is not a whole lot as far as price difference between the, uh, the solar charge controllers with or without Bluetooth, but it's a little bit. On the face of the solar charge controllers, you'll also see three LED lights. Those three LED lights are used to indicate what is also going on in the system. You'll see them flashing. Uh, you'll see a, a uh, the bulk light will, will flash intermittently when it's not actually doing anything. So if there's not enough solar coming into the, the, from the solar array to cause this to turn on, which your voltage has to be five volts above your battery bank voltage. So if you wanna charge a 12 volt nominal battery and your battery is sitting at 13.2 volts, you need to see at least 18.2 volts in order for your solar charge controller to turn on to start the charging process. Now, until it sees that, when, the, when this is off due to low voltage from the PV array, that bulk light will just sit there and pulse, and it'll, it'll flash slowly. Once it turns on, once it starts to charge, then the indicator will start moving through bulk. It'll stay on steady. It'll be a constant light on bulk. Once you re achieve the absorption voltage, it'll go into the absorb light. The absorb light will light up. And then once that is a, uh, once it goes through the absorb cycle, then it goes back into the float. Uh, the, the float light will light up. And that'll stay lit as long as you're receiving the, the proper charge to keep float going. And then again, as soon as, as, soon as the, the voltage drops off at the end of the day, it's gonna revert back to the, the, the bulk and then it'll go into uh, the off mode and you'll just see the bulk sitting there flashing, waiting, and it's just waiting for the sun to come up again. Something else to point out on the side of the, the cases, for all three solar charge controllers, there is a grounding lug that's supposed to be grounded to a chassis to make sure that the, uh, or a, a ground lug, an earth ground, to make sure that uh, if something goes wrong internally or, or if there's an issue, if there's a short to the case, that that power is then transferred to the ground in order to, to activate any kind of, of uh, circuit protection through the system. These systems will all self-regulate. So as they, they're all cooled by air using the aluminum heat sink on the back. But if they get to a point where they start generating too much heat, 
they start getting too hot, what will happen is that the solar charge controllers will actually start to deregulate the, the power coming into them in order to reduce the voltage and reduce the temperature being generated and the heat loss being generated inside the solar charge controller. Give us a call to Panels Up Solar at 228-363-9121 or reach out to us on our, from our website at panelsupsolar.com.